Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Gnome King of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, which is book number 21 in the Oz series. Uh, this has been a buddy read with Joel Swagman, although we're both on totally different parts of it at this point. Um, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts on rating at the end. So, Dane reads The Gnome King of Oz in which Regido, the wicked old gnome king, escapes from Runaway Island and sets out to reclaim his own kingdom and ravage Oz. Together with Peter, an unsuspecting lad from Philadelphia, he discovers the magic casket of Sue the Sorcerer and a flying cloak of invisibility. Meanwhile, Scraps, the extraordinary patchwork girl of Oz, has been kidnapped from the Emerald City. Along with Peter, Grumpy the Bear, and Oswald the Ostrich, she tries to save the capital of Oz before Regido's new sorcery can take effect. But it's finally up to Peter and his baseball pitching skill to make the final stand against the gnome king of Oz. So let's go through and check it out. I don't know why there were two uses of the word finally there, that was kind of annoying. And this just made me laugh here. This book is dedicated to my nephew Richard Shuff Thompson Jr. With lots of love and a little laugh for a little boy almost three and a half. If I had a wish I'd wish it quick and keep him always little dick. I mean a bit harsh to wish that he'd always have a little dick. Uh, and then we get this line here, uh, I am convinced that some mighty bad magic had gone into its making, but that's written into the narrative which to me kind of broke the contract between author and, and reader. It went from third person to first person just randomly. Oh yeah, then we travel, Then they travel 35 miles in a minute on the back of this like flying bridge thing. Um, I figured that out, that's three times the speed of sound they were travelling at, so there should have been a sonic boom. And there's a lot of gay stuff here, um, which is which is why um, sometimes a friend of Dorothy is used to refer to a gay person. Um, so we've got, it's cottages and castles fairly twinkle with emeralds and these precious stones studying the walls and even the marble walks give the air a soft glow and shimmer making gardens greener, fountains more sparkling and everything more glittering and gay. Ozma, a little girl fairy, is the present ruler of Oz and the wisest and gentlest sovereign the fairy country has ever known. With her in the Emerald City live 57,318 gay Ozites and nearly 100 celebrities for Ozma is invited to her court the most interesting characters from her four fairy kingdoms. And later on we get um, the Scarecrow, a lively fellow stuffed with straw, is perhaps the most famous. He has a palace of his own, but is a frequent visitor at the capital. Then there is the Tin Woodman, who rules over the Winkies and is a splendidly polished gentleman of tin. And Sir Hocus of Pokes, a knight seven centuries old. Jack Pumpkinhead, a singular person carved from wood with a large pumpkin for a head. Tick-Tock, a machine man who winds up like a clock and does everything but live. The famous Wizard of Oz, and so many more that 20 histories have already been written about their queer doings. And Scrap says, uh, a stitch in time saves nine. Well, who wants to save nine? Why should nine be saved any more than six or seven? And presumably it's because seven, eight, nine. We get a bell ringing long and clangingly, which just annoys me. I don't like unnecessary adverbs. Oh yeah, and then Peter falls several miles and then lands in the ocean. And the force of his fall carries him to the very bottom. I'm pretty sure if he fell several miles into the ocean, you would just splatter on the surface of it. And uh, Peter comes into some money, they find some gold coins, and he's going to get uh, a new car for his grandfather and 25 pairs of specs, so he'd always have one pair handy. And as anyone who has ever had glasses or dated with someone with glasses knows, they're always going missing. Someone exclaims botheration, which I think is a, a cracking little exclamation. Um, the ostrich, there's an ostrich in it. <laughs> And it rolls its eyes pleadingly. Again, just annoys me. And we get the coconut spelled C-O-C-O-A-N-U-T, which I guess is an archaic version of how to spell it. It's definitely not how you spell it now. And we get odds daggers, ejaculated the knight. Oh yeah, then we, we get the famous silence stone used by the ancient emperors of Oz to keep their wives quiet in times of war. Jesus. Oh yeah, and then we get this. As for Regido, deciding that the loss of speech for seven years was punishment enough, Ozma kindly granted the gnome his freedom, first taking the precaution to have him dipped into the fountain of oblivion. As anyone touched by these waters forgets all his past wickedness, let us hope that from now on Regido will lead a better life and cause no more trouble in Oz. Or hasn't he been dipped in this thing like six times? Clearly isn't working. Okay, well apparently that's all I filmed for um, the Goblin King of Oz. Um, I did, I'm pretty sure I filmed an outro, but I don't know where, where it went, so this is going to have to have to be a lot. But uh, it was okay, it was a 3.5 out of 5, it's pretty standard to be honest for the Oz books at this point, they're all much of a muchness. Um, if you're this far in the series, probably keep reading, otherwise don't bother. So there we have it, that's what I made of the Goblin King of Oz, as always don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video, thanks a lot, bye bye.